Well, hello, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's one o'clock. And this is Chatting with Chap. And I am your host, Ginger Wade. Well, if you saw last week, I wasn't live. It's because I was on vacation. But Dee and I had filmed a great little video helping folks ease the transition between public school and homeschool. So if you didn't see it or you know someone that would benefit from it, check it out, pass it on. Uh, we love to help as many people as possible to get started with homeschooling and um, to feel comfortable with the journey. So please share that with them. So today's title you may see is Walk in Victory. Some really great stuff I'm going to share with you today. But first I wanted to give you a smidgen of a legislative update. There are, there's many things going on in Harrisburg right now. There's two I wanted to bring your attention to. Um, some folks had written in to me asking about them and others had grabbed my attention. One was HB 1041. Um, this is particularly, it's similar to what a law that was passed a while ago giving homeschoolers permission to partake in extracurriculars in high school. Um, well, not even just high school, just in school. So like homeschool students can go to school and play in the orchestra or play on the soccer team. Um, and some schools would not allow that. Like there was a, a loophole in that law that where the schools could say, no, you can't. So this 1041 is, is changing that a little bit and giving public schoolers, um, homeschoolers more access to public school. Now, uh, CHAPS feeling on that is... Why would you want to go to the public school? <laughs> I can get, I get sports. I get sports. It might be hard. There are club teams, but it might be hard to find sports elsewhere or music. Um, but as far as like academics and classes, mm, no, school's a pretty sketchy place these days. So um, anyway, just want to let you know that that's out there. Also, HB1 was introduced recently by Andrew Lewis. And... This is to give homeschoolers or anyone uh, a scholarship that you could apply for, $6,000 scholarship that you could use for educational purposes. Um, CHAP, along with many homeschoolers out there, if you see any conversations on this particular bill, does not support receiving government funds. And I know a lot of us think, well, I pay taxes. Why don't I get to use it? Well, it's just part of the tax load. You know what? Everybody's doing it. Grandparents who don't have kids in the system anymore do it too. Um, but as a student, as an active student, to receive funds from the government, if you know anything about government, you know that if you receive funds from them, there are strings attached. And it may, there's a lot of promises going on with HB1 that say, no, no, there's not going to be any strings. Mm, maybe not now. So, um, our general feeling about it is that it's not going to be a wise choice because it always entraps you as the homeschool parent. So, that's a little legislative update. Now, let's get to the meat of our topic for the day. This is about walking in victory. Um, and I did want to share that the content from what I'm going to share comes from this great little purple prayer book by Heidi St. John. It's called Prayers for the Battlefield. You can find it out on her webpage, but it is chock full of really great devotionals and prayers. And there was one in particular from page 75 to 79 um, called A Prayer for the Mom Who Needs a Win About Walking in Victory. So I just wanted to share you some thoughts, her thoughts and my added in thoughts about uh, walking in victory, because um, here we are. We're in October, right? It's October, the school year is well underway, some of us for a number of months, some of us for just a few weeks, but we're rolling along, right? Our homeschool journey is on, some have just started, um, some have been doing it for years, but as you're walking your homeschool journey, as you're going along day to day with your children learning together, um, are you leaning on Jesus? Are you relying on his strength? Are you relying on your strength? So that's something to think about. We try to do things in our own strength. You're like, oh, if I could just work harder, if I just do more, if I just, just, just. And it's largely about what we can do in our own strength. Um, but we forget about the incredible power 
that's available to us through the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus draws us into him and we invite him in and the Holy Spirit is in there. The Holy Spirit, I mean, that's the power that created the world that keeps it functioning, right? That keeps all things going, that keeps us breathing. That power is is in us to give us strength to do what God has called us to do, right? The the whole Shema, if you're familiar with the term Shema, it's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 7. It's about, you know, teaching your kids all the time, which is kind of where we get this premise for homeschooling, having your kids at home. That incredible power is is in you, and we need to rely on that power to do this great thing that God has called us to do. So the blood of Jesus assures us of our victory over sin and Satan, um, which is awesome. I mean, we are assured there is victory. I know some days it feels really hard, and we don't feel like we have victory over our sin or over the attacks of the prowling lion, right? But we do. We do. And it doesn't mean that we have just because we do have victory, where a guaranteed victory does not mean that you won't have trials and temptations. And honestly, the trials and temptations, whether it be as you are working with your kids, or whether it be um, in your marriage, in your church community, in your community at large, wherever it is that you face your trials and temptations, um, you have a testimony. You, you won't have a testimony to share with people about Jesus and his grace and the gospel if you don't face trials and temptations, right? So uh, when you have a testimony, then we face trials and temptations, you have a testimony to share about God's grace and his strength. Um, and that doesn't happen unless we face trials. Right? So it's an awesome thing, actually. I think of James chapter 1. It counted all joy when you face trials and temptations because this creates perseverance and that you can, you can have testimony, you can witness to the power of God working in you, right? To get you through these trials and grow your character. So the cool thing about trials and temptations is you don't have to face them unprepared. Like, how do you have victory in these trials and temptations? Well, you go unprepared. Like, you don't start a big project or go to war or anything like that without first preparing. So uh, our battles are in the spiritual realm, right? Like, so the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour, right? I was just studying these things I'm going to read to you in just a minute, journaling about them, and God's really talking to me through them. So um, scripture reading and memorization, study the word of God, speak the word of God. This is going to prepare you for the trials you will face. Pray, pray the scriptures, pray over your kids, pray over your homeschool, just pray, pray, pray. And that's going to prepare you for the spiritual battles you will face. And they are largely spiritual battles. That is where the battle happens. So in this prayer, I'm going to open up and read to you. She has an acronym for victory. And I want to share it with you. You might want to jot down the scripture references and just pray over them and study them on your own. That's been really awesome for me this week. That's what I'm doing. So um, V is for vigilantly keep watch. Recognize that we have a powerful adversary who should not be underestimated. That's 1 Peter 5, 8. I insist on praise. Praising God is like kryptonite to the devil. No matter what happens, affirm the goodness of God. Um, refer to James 1, chapter 2 through 4. C, claim the higher ground. Stay on the narrow road and do what's right. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. T, take up the armor of God. It's not enough to know what the armor is. We must put it on through prayer each day. That's Ephesians chapter 6. O, own your own sin. We will never be victorious if we are harboring unconfessed sin. See 2 Corinthians 7, verses 9 and 10. That's a hard one. It's hard. It's um, Sometimes it's hard for us to see our own sin and to be willing to confess it, but it's absolutely necessary. Our rest in the goodness of God's plan. He is always, ever, only good. Psalm 145, verse 9. God's plan, a lot of times, is not our plan. Have you noticed that? Um, we make plans, and we think we know how things are going to go, and God's like, we're doing something different <laughs> and we can go along willingly and experience the joy of the excitement of the adventure or we can go kicking and screaming and not have as fun a time with it so um 
just rest in his plan. It's, it's definitely the better choice. And the last, the why here, yield your will. Just like children must yield to their parents' loving discipline, we yield to God's correction. John chapter 14, verse 23. So that's how you say John's acronym for victory. Really good points. Like I said, I'm studying through them and journaling through them this week, taking it really slow, one scripture a day, and just praying over it. And God's really speaking to me. So that could really help you to feel victorious in your daily living and your homeschool. So remember, important lessons, study the word. We can't know and do what is right if we don't know the word. Okay, so the way you get to know what is good and right to do is by studying truth, which is the scripture. And you train yourself and your kids. You can learn together. You can't walk in victory if you're not walking in the Holy Spirit strength. So if you're trying to do everything of your own strength, of your own will, of your own desire, it's not going to be a victorious thing. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, yield to his will and be obedient to his plan for you. And like I said earlier, a lot of times it's not our plan. It's not our idea. So it's really laying down. It's just being humble, right? And, and laying down what we want to do for what he has called us to do. Change your perspective. This is an interesting one for me. So we have our definitions of success and definitions of failure. And for each person, it's going to be different, right? So a success for you could be completely different than a success for someone else in the area of homeschooling or parenting or marriage or, or anything, right? But our, everybody's definition of success and failure might not necessarily be what God sees as a success or a failure, it makes me think of Saul. Remember when Saul, like, he went out and attacked all the guys. God had said, kill everything. Get get rid of it all. And Saul went out and did it, but kept all the good goats and all the good sheep and whatever. And then they had this big sacrifice. And Samuel's like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, you know, we got kept the good stuff. And Samuel's like, that's not what God said to do. He said, get rid of all of it. And And God said, I desire obedience, not sacrifices. Right? So... Um, being obedient to him is a success. It may look like a failure to us because for whatever reason, I don't know, um, what we may see as a success might not necessarily be a success in God's eyes. So um, praying for, pers for perspective would be really good. I find my perspective is not frequently in line with how God sees things. Uh, also, walking in victory doesn't mean having the perfect homeschool. Guess what? Release that thought because there is no perfect homeschool. There is none. And there's no normal homeschool either. It's like Dee said when she was on the show with me a um, year ago. Normal is a setting on a washing machine, and that's about it. <laughs> there is no normal. Um, there is no perfect. Just release it. Just release it. You will be victorious. Uh, that will be a success if you can release that thought of obtaining the perfect homeschool that is normal. It just doesn't happen. So victory is surrendering to Jesus and yielding your will to his, even in home education, even just in all things. So as you journey through each day, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. I think of that hymn, um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. I always want to say, um, gaze full in his beautiful, beautiful face. I don't think that's exactly the lyrics, but that's what I think of. You know, gaze on his face. Just gaze. Have you ever gazed at something? Either your spouse or a loved one or just something beautiful like a sunset or a lake. Just gazing. Just think about gazing on Jesus. Um, Psalm 27, 4 is what that particular hymn was um, based on. So allow God's grace to keep you steadfast making wise decisions as you walk in victory each day with him. Steadfastness is another big thing that we really need today. And I believe I'm going to talk about that as a separate thing in a different episode. But um, the way to be steadfast and victorious is to allow God's grace to work in you, yield to the Holy Spirit, letting his strength work in you, not your strength. So... Big things to think about today. Again, this is all to Heidi St. John's Little Purple Prayer Book, The Prayers for the Battlefield. Great resource if you're looking for a prayer book. Uh, lots of scripture-based um, 
prayers in that book. But so if you just jumped in now, you missed it earlier. I had a really great acronym. Well, Heidi had a really great ac acronym for victory with a number of scriptures to look up. So you want to check those out. And uh, I hope your homeschool is going well. I hope you're enjoying October. Um, I will be back next week. I might be skipping a week or two here or there because we're in the middle of drama season for me. I'm directing another show and November gets a little dicey. So I might not make some Wednesdays. I'll try to warn you if that's the case, but I think I'll be back next week. So thanks for tuning in today. Uh, remember, we have a podcast, too. It's out on Spotify and um, iTunes and all the other stuff out there. Look up Chat with Chap. You can share that with friends. Let them know that it's out there. And I'd love to hear from you. So feel free to comment below or send us um, a message through our contact form on chaponline.com. All right. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.